Hi, I'm Miss Sarah, and this is At Home Makerspace, where I show you how to make fun projects with things you can find at home. This summer, our library is offering a fun summer reading program through Read Squared. If you're interested in learning more about our summer reading program or Read Squared, be sure to check out the link in the description. This summer, our theme is Tales and Tales. So here on Makerspace, we've been making all sorts of animal-themed projects. In my last video, I showed you how to make puppets like these. Be sure to check out the link in the description. In this video, I'll be making three puppet theaters to go along with our three puppets. So let's get started. The first puppet theater I wanted to show you was one that I made for my sock puppet. Now a sock puppet theater needs to have an opening at the bottom that's big enough for your arm to reach through. Some of the theaters can be quite small with the puppeteer standing off to the side and reaching their arm through a small theater, but other theaters can be much larger. In fact, you could have a theater that is so big that you, the puppeteer, can hide behind it and to reach your puppet up above. It can be tricky to find a box that's big enough for that kind of theater, but don't worry, I have a really quick, really easy trick using a doorway. You'll need to find a doorway or a hallway like I have here that is pretty narrow and make something that will go across the opening. So I'm going to grab a couple of trays that will cover it and one was not big enough so you can see here I ended up using two and they fit across perfectly. It should be high enough for you to hide behind. Now grab your puppets, duck beneath the covering, and you can put on your puppet show. As you saw, I used a couple of trays to fill the opening at the base of my hallway, but you should feel free to use whatever supplies you can find around the house that will do the trick. So you might have a really big piece of cardboard that you could use. You might have a few large boxes that you can stack together. You could use some wrapping paper and tape one edge, bring it across and tape the other edge, or you could even run a string along it and then drape a blanket over. Any of these things will work and be creative about which supplies you have around the house to make your own doorway puppet theater. The next theater I wanted to show you was one that I made for my stick puppet using a cereal box. Now my stick puppet is pretty small, so a cereal box was a great size, but if you'd like to make a similar one for your sock puppet, just grab a box that's a bit bigger. Here's how to make it. You'll need a cardboard box that's big enough for your puppet, a ruler, scissors, a pen or pencil, some tape, and something to cover your box. I'm using brown tempera paint and I'll need a cup and paintbrush as well. The first thing I need to do is cut out an opening in the front of my box. I want this opening to be a large rectangle and I want to make sure that I leave a frame about an inch wide around the opening. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my rectangle using my ruler to help me measure. You can see I've drawn in my rectangle, so now I'm going to use my scissors to cut out that rectangle. The easiest way to get started is to poke your scissors through the box somewhere in the rectangle you want to cut out. Then simply cut out the rectangle and my younger viewers might want to have a grown-up help you with this part. When you're all done cutting, your box should now look something like this. Next, I'm going to make an opening in the bottom of my theater. Make sure that your opening is big enough to fit your puppets. 
since I'm going to be using my stick puppets for this one, my opening doesn't need to be very deep, but I do want to make sure it runs the whole length of my stage. All right, so now that I've cut that out, the last thing I'm going to do is use a bit of tape to hold my box in place. I'm going to start by using some tape to close up the top of my box. And just a word of warning, I did use this clear scotch tape on the outside of my box, which worked well to keep it closed, but if you're planning to paint the sides of your box, the slick tape doesn't really hold paint very well. It ended up flaking off. So I'd recommend either taping the inside of your box if you plan to paint it, or use a rougher tape, like a masking tape, that has some more texture that the paint can grab onto. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the side here, taping it just to make sure that everything holds together. When you're all done securing your box, the last thing we'll want to do is to decorate it. So I'm going to be using some brown paint to paint the outside of my box so we don't have those words poking through, but you can decorate it however you want. So I'm going to put a little bit of paint in my cup and then grab my paintbrush and start painting. And if you are going to be painting, I recommend putting a cloth or some newspaper under your box just to make sure you don't get your table messy. You could also try painting outside. After I finished with my first coat of paint, I'm going to let my box dry. And when it's dry, I'm going to add a second coat of paint because you can still see through my first coat. As you can see, that second coat really helped to cover up all the words. Now we let it dry. And then it's time to make sure it works with your puppets. Looks good. Your puppet theater could be done there, or you can add some extra decoration. Curtains are a popular addition to puppet theaters. So here's how to add them. To make your curtains, you'll need some fabric. I'm using felt, some glue or tape, a pair of scissors, and some ribbon or string. Mine is in a similar color to my fabric. The first thing you'll want to do is cut your fabric to the size you need for your box. Now my felt was already about the right size, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half so that I have two curtains, one on the right side of my box and one for the left side of my box. I'm just going to fold it in half and cut down the middle, like so. And now I have two identical pieces of fabric for my curtains. Next, I'm going to go ahead and grab my theater. And I want to attach my curtains onto that lip at the top of my box. So I'm attaching it there. And I'm going to be using some tape to do this. Tape isn't the stickiest and I would actually probably recommend a nice strong glue, uh, maybe even hot glue if you or your grown up is okay with that. But I ended up using tape because I used the tape earlier in my project and it's what I had available. So as you can see, I've placed some pieces of tape at the top of my curtain and then I'm taping it to the inside of my box, the side that hasn't been painted. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And let me turn it so you can see a little bit better. So it's going here on the inside of the box. Can you see that? And then we're just going to use the tape to attach it. There we go. Okay.
Now if I flip it over, you can see that I now have my two curtains that cover the stage. But I don't want my stage to be completely covered, so the next thing I'm going to do is pull the curtains back to the side and I'm going to use some ribbon to hold it in place. So it'll be tacked up just sort of like that and the same thing on the other side. Like that. There we go. So to do my ribbon, I'm going to cut a length of ribbon that is long enough to wrap around the fabric and make a bow. Uh, I think it ended up being about a foot long and I'm cutting two identical pieces, one for each side of the curtain. Now I'm going to wrap the ribbon around the curtain about halfway up where it goes from being kind of diagonal across the box to hanging down. And I'm just going to tie a knot and add a small bow. All right, don't worry if it takes you a little bit of practice to get a bow right, and you can always ask for a grown-up to help if you need a little bit of help getting your bow. All right, so when one side is done, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side, like so. And now my theater has curtains. Finally, you can also decorate your puppet theater by adding a background to help set the stage. This background will help your audience know where your story is taking place. You can find a picture online and print it out, or you can draw your own. To draw your setting, you'll need paper the size of your theater and some coloring supplies. I'll be using markers. And all you need to do is draw a picture that you want to be the background of your play. Since mine will be about an owl, I decided to draw a nice big tree. And since it's summertime, I went ahead and made the leaves nice and green. Don't forget to color in the bark, add some grass and a few flowers. Now my setting is complete. And all I need to do is grab some tape and tape it to my theater. To do this, I will be making a roll of tape with the sticky part on the outside. And I'll repeat this on all four corners. So one will go here and the rest will go on the other corners like so. Now place your setting against the back wall of your theater, position it where you'd like it to go, and press down on the corners to secure the tape. When everything's secure, your theater is set and ready to use. Okay, little owl, it's time to put on a show. Now that I've shown you one way to make a puppet theater out of a box, I wanted to show you a different way to do it. So here's how I made a puppet theater for my marionette. So here I have a large cardboard box with the curtains drawn right onto the box. I'm also going to need some markers and a pair of scissors. Now, my box happened to have this drawing already on it, but you can always draw your own on a blank box. The first thing I'm going to do is cut off the flaps from the top of the box. Since this box will be for my marionettes, I want the top open so I can work the puppets from above. Next, I'm going to take my markers and color in the curtains on the front of my box. Once again, if your box is blank, you can draw in your stage with curtains. And there we go. My curtains are completely colored in. 
And the next thing I want to do is grab a pair of scissors and cut out the stage. Once again, I'm going to start by poking the blade of my scissors through the cardboard, and you can always get a grown up to help you with this part. Now I'm just going to cut out that blank area inside the curtains. And when we're all done, it should look something like this. Now you can grab your puppet and test it out. I think this one works really well for my marionette. For this puppet theater, I decided not to use a background. Instead, I found things around the house to use as props that helped us set the scene and let the audience know where our story is taking place. For this theater, I looked around my house for something that would work as grass and ended up finding this green tissue paper, which fit the bottom of my theater just about right. You could also use things like scrapbook paper or wrapping paper if you need some bigger sheets to cover the bottom of your theater. Then I remembered I had these small little topiaries which would work perfectly as tiny trees. With the stage set, it was time to grab our puppet and test out our theater. Let's see what this little puppet can do. Now that you've seen two different ways to make a puppet theater out of a box, I encourage you to mix and match the techniques to work for you and your puppets. You might choose to draw your curtains or make curtains out of fabric. You might choose to make a background or set your stage with props. It's all up to you and what works best with what you have around the house. We hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own puppet theaters. If you do make one, we'd love to see it. So please take a picture or even a video of you putting on a puppet show and share it with us at the library. You can do so through our Facebook at www.facebook.com FHCPL. Through our Instagram, our handle is at FHCPL or you can send us an email. Our email address is makerspace at finleylibrary.org. Remember to keep reading and logging your time in our summer reading program, and I'll see you again soon in a new video. Bye!